speaker for the evening is Laura Dooling. Uh, she is a poet psychologist who creates and resides in Austin, Texas. Her chapbook, A Fiery Grace, which she'll be reading from tonight, was a finalist in the two, 2009 Finishing Line Press New Women's Voices chapbook competition. Uh, for those of you familiar with Finishing Line, that's quite an honor. It's a really great press. Uh, her poetry has been published in a number of literary journals, including Calliope and Lilibut Review. Laura grew up on the East Coast of New York and D.C. and has been writing poetry since age 11. We've been waiting a lot of years. <laughs> uh, her poetry is inspired by nature, culture, relationship, and my personal favorite, personal musings. Um, I met Laura at the Round Top Poetry Festival over a year ago now, and um, we're in critique groups together, and uh, both inspired by Ellen Bass, and which she has a lot more in common with Ellen Bass than I do. Anyways, <laughs> point being, um, Laura is a, a fantastic poet, and uh, we're going to get to hear from her book tonight, which you can buy at finishinglinepress.com. And um, you're about to be blown away. Yeah. All right. So happy to do this and see everybody. Um, so the first poem I'm going to do is from my chapbook. Um, it's inspired by my uh, Catholic heritage, which some of you I'm sure can relate to. Starfish. When we were little, the nuns told us about limbo. Not dancers bending backwards, shimmy, shimmying under a lowered stick. No. Instead, a gray land, a place of fog and furrow. It is where the babies go. Dead babies who live in gardens, who play with plaster angels and cannot leave. Because no water trickled down their foreheads, they remain suspended in an infant's aquarium, blurred, still, aqua ferns in the moon, blue-green and silent, weighed with untoward gravity, webbed sea creatures, and others sorrow, tiny fingers trapped in the moment of forming, starfish, iridescent white, like the hands of dolls seen at the bottom of underwater wrecks. I yearn to dive down, wake them, make them halos of pink cor coral, sea urchin slippers, and bracelets of pearl. We would skip in rings at the bottom of the sea to the pulsing rhythm of the intransigent womb, where all things begin and some, half-formed, may someday come to be. The next um, is for an old friend of mine who has lost her way. So Nina, this is for you. <clears throat> the wildness of color that is her, she tames pastel, hides in chinks of convent walls where color cannot breathe. I see scarves whipping in her eyes dancing in the winds. She's tied them to a line, flags of tempest islands where no one's ever been. When we were younger, our angels rode stallions bareback, drunk on purple teas. Oranges. To tell you what you mean to me, I could peel an orange slow, unwrap each shining piece with most tenderness and ceremony, each sweet slice, thin velvet cupped in my hand, breathe with awe your citrus delicacy, fingers perfumed with sea and island. But that would take just a fraction of a second, and I need more time. <laughs> <clears throat> this 
um, one was inspired both uh, by my Italian American heritage, this one coming, as well as it being um, a bit of a love poem. So it's called Wash Yourself, <clears throat> excuse me, Wash Yourself with Italy. Hmm. So my father says when he and his little sister were sick on the old block, his grandmother rubbed them down with olive oil. Her hard fingers sought out the fever, out to knead and fight away all enemies till the children were sleepy, sleek, and soft, and the scent of summer olives filled the room. Rub me down with olive oil. I have a fever. Add some sweet basil. While you're at it, take a glass of wine. Pour it slowly over my head. Anoint me. Let it trickle down my eyes. I will take you then, sleepy, sleek, and soft, and whisper songs of Italy between rings and wet tresses. And I have some new ones. <laughs> All of these next, those were, were relatively, I don't want to say old, but you know, Obviously, this chapbook's been around a few years. There, you know, but all the ones I'm going to read now, I think they're all within the past year. So here we go. This one is, um, it's a poem of form. It's a villanelle. <clears throat> and it's an homage to all of my childhood writings, which all rhymed. <laughs> it's called Southern Rain. There is a mystery to rain, a sweet relief, a shuddered sigh, sweet baptism of pain. Today the thunder finally came. My blood is humming to the sky. There is a mystery to rain. Streams of tears course down the lane. The begging clouds release and cry, sweet baptism of pain. This cyclic dance of loss and gain, I cannot know the reason why. There is a mystery to reign. So sings again the old refrain, my separateness is just a lie, sweet baptism of pain. The evening wakes, the stars remain, another day decides to die. There is a mystery to reign, sweet baptism of pain. is called What the Crone Knows. Can you hear me okay? Okay. And it's actually, it was actually written in answer to something that Sharon Olds said um, in a poem at Roundtop that Wade and I had a conversation about. He just doesn't know that I wrote a poem about it. <laughs> <laughs> Wise woman, she always has the answer for awkward young girls who pray fervently to those angels, who drink too much coffee, cling to certainty in styrofoam cups with ethereal nail-chewed fingers. Perhaps she was one of these girls, skittering on the edges, spinning wildly, attracted to centrifugal force, letting pieces of herself go with every turn until her skin grew raw, needed bandaging, with the softest of petals. Perhaps she learned that transformation requires the courage of comets, headlong, heedless, ablaze. That time is a clever liar, kisses like Judas, every moment undressing slowly to the previous moments unknowing. Perhaps she knows that just when we think we've finally done it, made the unredeemable mistake of stepping off love's cliff for good, 
even then, even then, we'll find that trickster grinning already at the bottom, arms thrown out, waiting to catch us. This next one is called Phonics Lesson. <laughs> um, I should preface it by saying that when I was eight years old, my family moved from Brooklyn, New York to Northern Virginia, the Northern Virginia suburbs, uh, the DC suburbs. And although they're only four and a half to five hours apart, the culture shock is un was unbelievable. So this uh, is for the eight-year-old I was then. <clears throat> Phonics lesson. Dog rhymes with log, says the workbook. <laughs> Confusion, irritation flood my little body. I know what dog sounds like. Awning, sausage, fawn. <laughs> log, on the other hand, rhymes with sog, frog. Fog, completely different. <laughs> but here, dog does rhyme with log. People stretch out their vowels, water them down, weaken them. We are no longer in Brooklyn. We have moved to the country, <laughs> an exotic wilderness, Northern Virginia, where snakes slice through cucumber vines and wild onions spring from grass between our toes. Every day in the backyard, we nervously finger our hair, searching for blood-swelled ticks. Fat toads camp out in the lawn, the soil bright red clay, and down the street, there is an actual creek with real crawdads. <laughs> My mother. What's wrong with these people? They don't <coughs> eat law. Make sure you eat before you go over to their house. They make pizza with Munster cheese. <laughs> and they make coffee like water. <laughs> Where is everybody? No one sits outside. We can't walk to the store. We search for A and P, polio, endamins, ronzoni, eight o'clock coffee, Carvel, Nathan's, a real Italian deli. No one knows about block parties, melts crayons and bottle caps, or flips baseball cards. At night, it's too quiet. I miss the purr of engines, the steady rhythm of headlights sweeping across the wall, the rise and fall of neighbors' voices lulling me to sleep. I wake up in Virginia to my mother's voice belting out songs with Barry Manilow. <laughs> I can't smile without you. I can't smile without you. I can't laugh and I can't sing. <laughs> <laughs> the lawnmowers hum, the cicadas screech, and the suburbs stretch on in their cookie cutter maze. We are never going back to Brooklyn. And little by little, my mother is finding it hard to do anything. I find myself then, wooed by the trees, soft, milky summers, rustling autumn secrets, clouds of winking fireflies, rush of delicate silence, golden sprays of forsythia, falling apple blossoms singing swaying branches of willow, everything a sweet litany of green, my spell of forgetting, calling me, calling, so gradual, it was imperceptible, like water drops, circling, draining off of fingertips. Brooklyn, a quickly fading scrap of concrete, remote, a, wow, you come from Brooklyn, up your nose with a rubber hose. <laughs> but where did my accent go? Is it in the attic with the missing Christmas stockings? Is it in the trunk of the old blue Chevy? Maybe it's lost with the Donnie and Marie dolls in their moving boxes never even opened. What parts are lost? What parts are gained when we learn to speak differently? For the record, 
40 years later, dog still doesn't rhyme with log. <laughs> This next, um, well, I should say, you know, generally I don't write um, about social justice issues, uh, but this one kind of begged to be written and just happened. And I wrote it for a lot of the kids that I see in my practice um, who are hurting and they're telling me how they're gay, they're bi, they're pansexual, they're, they might be trans, and I, I kind of want, I just, I had it with the intolerance. I had it. <laughs> um, it's called Love Who You Will. This is actually very new. It's about two weeks old, so I'm trying it out on you guys. Love Who You Will. Do you want to go and build an ark for the fallen birds? Do you grow tipsy on harmless carnal wanderings? Do you and the one who make your heart quiver Swear to relinquish false selves forever? Let's pretend it's the year 3025. You're from Alpha Centauri, and we're causing a terrible scandal in neighboring galaxies. Will you shelter me? Tell me you love me, and we'll shock everyone. I'll put my pinky deep inside your third belly button, <laughs> while you blow wet raspberries on my thigh with that mysterious fourth appendage. <laughs> I don't care what parts you have, I have, don't have, you wish you had or didn't, what you call yourself, what tender anatomy puzzles you play, none of it matters. Only that you lay a stone on the mountain of kindness. Seek beauty in each other's tremulous, improbable existence. Mm. <laughs> is my own anthem against uh, depression. And it works. <laughs> there exists, there exists now in you, raw sinew, grain, something green, golden, and fierce. Pull it up, wrench it from the sated wells of being, shout it into breath. Weave your very fingers into banners of insolent and tremulous exuberance.